What we have here is a sequence question, and we'll talk a moment about exactly what that means. But first, let's just talk about the, the letters. So we're given these letters, K, and then you have a little one here. You would pronounce it, you would say it K sub one, K sub one. And the K is not that significant. It's the little number here in the corner, K sub one, K sub two. So sub one just means it's the first number on the list. Sub two just means it's the second number on the list. Now we could use the letter K. They could have used the letter X, the variable X, X sub one. They could have said uh, A sub one. You'll see different letters used in different problems. The letter itself is not significant. Two things are significant. One is whether we're talking about the first number, the second number, I'll write K sub three, the, the third number on the list, and I'll continue out through, they say there are nine numbers here, nine numbers, and then it ends, that's it. So this is called a finite sequence. There's a limited number of numbers on the sequence on the list. What you often see and probably usually see is a sequence with an infinite number of numbers. So we would, I'm going to write some, some ellipses here, some some dots, and we would go up to a point where you have, it would be called K sub N. N would be the nth number, and I said N could be, if there are an infinite number of, of possible numbers, N could be anything. And if you see such a sequence, what's very important is the number to the left of that, the previous number, you would label that K sub, K sub what? K sub N minus one. So the minus one just means the number that came before K sub K, and uh, K sub N, excuse me, and the number that comes before K sub N minus one would be K sub N minus N minus two. So that you will see something like that in other sequence questions, but this one's a little simpler. I'm, I'm gonna erase what we just wrote here. So just a little lesson here, really a partial lesson on sequences. There will be a lot more to say on a harder problem. Now let's talk a little bit more about what we know. We are given a formula, and I'll start by looking at K sub three, the third number on the list. We're told that every number is equal to the sum of the two numbers that came before it. So k sub one plus k sub two would equal k sub three. If I go over to the right, the number whose value we're asked about, k sub nine, that would equal the sum of the value of k sub seven plus the value of k sub eight. If you added those together, you would get the value of k sub nine. So that's the first thing to think about, the formula. And this is essentially what it would look like. In harder questions, we could write it in more formal terms. But for our purposes right now, this is the way to look at it. In addition to the formula, we're given more information. We're told that the value of k sub five of the fifth number on the list is 18. That's really important. So we now have a value of one number on the list. So we have two things. We have the formula and we have the value of one number on the list. And our question here is what is the value of k sub nine? Well, whenever you look at a data sufficiency question, you should ask, well, what do I need to know in order to answer the question? Well, what we would need to know here is what the value of k sub seven and the value of k sub eight, I'll just write a little box and now erase it. If we know those, you could find the value of k sub nine. So based on the statements, can we find the value? Will we be able to find the value of k sub seven and k sub eight? Well, let's take a look. Statement one, the value of k sub four is equal to 11. So I'll just write a little arrow down here. k sub four has a value of 11. Now I'll write k sub five as well. 18. Now, what do we know from our formula? We know that if we added 11 and 18, if we added k sub 4 and k sub 5, we would get what the value of k sub 6. We would get the value of k sub 6, which here would be what? And now, as you may have noticed, we could keep going. 18 plus 29, k sub 5 plus k sub 6 would give us the value of k sub 7. And then once we knew the value of k sub 7, we could find the value of k sub 8 and we could add them up and we would answer our question. So statement one gives us enough information, sufficient information to answer the question. Statement one is sufficient, so we can cross out answer B. We can't say that statement two and only statement two is sufficient because statement one was sufficient. We can't say that neither statement is sufficient if statement one was sufficient. So we can cross out B, C, and E. Now, as always, when you look at statement two, very important to look at it in isolation, forget everything you saw in statement one. So we will actually erase all of it. Statement two, k sub 6 equals 29. So here, I'll just, again, use the arrow, k sub 6 equals 29. And now I'll fill in what I know. We're told that k sub 5 is 18, so I'll write that down here. What do I know? If I added those up, I would get the value of k sub 7, which is what I need to know, because then I can get the value of k sub 8 by, by adding 29 with the value of k sub 7. So no need to do a lot of math here. We just know that we could find k sub 9. 
Great thing about data sufficiency questions, you don't always have to do a lot of math, you just have to know that you could do, you could do the math to find the answer. So in this case, each statement, answer D, each statement sufficient. As far as sequence questions go, this would be considered one of the easier ones. As harder sequencing questions come along, we'll, we'll talk more about sequences, more that you would need to write out, more that you would need to know. But this is almost a really good introductory question about sequences. And knowing this will make it a lot easier to answer other sequence questions that come up in the future. If you have any comments, by the way, feel free to write them. Very curious to hear your thoughts on this question and sequencing questions in general. For explanations on other math questions on practice test two, practice test one, and in the future, lots of questions in the GMAT official guide 2020, 2021, and beyond, go to the homepage of our YouTube channel and click on the tab in the middle that says playlists. You'll see more and more playlists in the future. Subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful. Click a thumbs up, pass it along to your friends who are taking the GMAT, and we'll see you in the next video.